welcome back to Ring Necks and Retrievers, our Flushman Dustin podcast. This wow. is our second video. Oh, we got Nick here as well as Tyler. Got some bling on, guys. Yeah, yeah. Have to got be some coming bling out on. soon. Uh, we got another design that we might be coming out with uh, that we're going to look into as well. And then we're going to take a poll and kind of see what everybody would like better. Uh, but uh, we got one in so far. So yeah. hopefully we can get another one for Tyler and then we'll go from there. That's right. That's why I'm not wearing any because we only got one. So today, guys, uh, we want to bring up a pretty – we see it in a lot of pheasant forums, uh, a lot of Facebook groups. It's kind of a question that you see get tossed around a lot. Uh, it is all around what gun you use, what ammo you use, and then the choke that you use. Um, so we're just going to break it down and talk about what each of us like to use, what gun we're currently using chokes and so we're just going to start from there um obviously as we go through um and you guys are listening feel free to send us messages for questions they have and we'll respond to those uh through email so our email is ringnecksandretrievers at gmail.com uh and like i said we're having a beer on this one yeah uh, we'll take it from uh ron bain at uh hunting dog po podcast yep. i'm happy out so with that, uh, let's get started. So Nick, I'm just going to start off with a question quick. Um, so for your gun, what, what brand and uh, model of gun are you using? Well, so, you know, I'll kind of start back kind of how I got started on my gun. When I was young, uh, my dad actually bought me a Browning BPS. And ever since I had that BPS, uh, and for you that aren't aware of it, it's a gun that loads in the bottom and injects at the bottom. So it could be a lefty or a right-handed gun. Um, That'd be good. So sort of something I really felt. What's that? That'd be good for me, considering I'm left-handed. Yep. Yep. So I really fell in love with the Browning at that point, and when I was so young, I loved the gold trigger. Just thought it was, you know, meant something. Um, from there, the older I got, uh, actually, in 2011, when Browning came out with the Browning Maxis, I ended up buying the uh, the Browning Maxis 12 gauge, and I've had this since 2011. Uh, it's light. I've never had it jam on me. I've shot well over a thousand shells through this thing, probably closer to 50,000. I mean, I shoot it a ton every year. Um, and I think the, the easeability of the use of it. So what I mean by that is when you're taking the gun apart, it's so simple just to pop this off and now my gun's apart. And then I can take the barrel straight off and just pull it right off. That to me is something that I really like. If you're in the field and need to clean your gun quick or anything like that, or if it does get jammed, you need to take the barrel off, uh, whatever the case may be, it's just so easy. And, and the functionality of it is really nice. Yeah, uh, and it shoots. A, a thing on those, I think you were talking to me one time, like uh, you can eject a shell, but keep the shells in it so there's not one in the chamber. Yep. So I have a little lever right here on the side. So I can actually uh, eject the shell out of the chamber, but keep everything in the magazine. Uh, That's so, nice. Yeah, so, you know, I have my uh, permit to carry, so it's super nice because I'll just put it in the case with yep. the shells in the magazine, and then at that point, when I get to the field, I can hop out, I just press this button forward, boom, shell pops in, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So. Dude, you got to tell them that story with that gun. So, first year out in South Dakota, <laughs> um, you know, Tyler and I think, God, we're going to have a good year, just got diesel back from the trainer. Thought we were going to kill it. Got one bird being out there for three days, I believe it was. Yeah. Three days, two and a half probably. And yeah, uh, the yeah, last yeah. day we're out there, just over it. But I get out of the truck, get ready to go. And I must have thought I had hit this button and ejected one in there because uh, it was our last hunt. And I was like yelling at Tyler, like, hurry up, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I get out there, rooster gets up, oh, 20, 30 yards right out in front Beautiful of me. Shot. And I'm thinking, Finally getting it at my South Dakota rooster. Didn't load my gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that was so funny. I remember I was sitting there holding mine. I was, what, 30, 40 yards away from you? Yep. And I see you raise up, and I'm like, why is he not shooting? And then he's like, oh, fuck, I forgot to load my gun. Yep, forgot uh, to load it. And so that uh, – that right there was my first South Dakota hunting experience. I got zero birds. Tyler got one. 
yep. and I couldn't have been more disappointed. Uh, but yeah, so that was that was the story with that gun. But other than that, you know, it's been uh, tried and true through. You know, I've taken it duck hunting, turkey hunting, you name it. Uh, I've done it with it. Uh, it is on the pricier side, um, but well worth the money if you want to get a really good gun. Is that a three inch or a three and a half inch chamber? Uh, I actually got a three and a half at this one. Nice. Yep. That's probably smart. Did you use that when you went duck hunting? I did. Actually, when we went goose hunting that time, we got that oh, goose. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and you you have a little bit different uh, brand, I know, for one of your guns that you use. Um, Why don't you tell well, them about that a little bit? So my brand, I actually, the guy that I got into pheasant hunting with, uh, his name's Barry. He's from my hometown. He ran two labs. Uh, he had a a uh, pretty fair amount of guns. Um, I actually, my first gun was a Charles Daly 12 gauge. Uh, it was kind of when they first came out first kind of semi auto that they ever made. And it didn't really work too well. Uh, I took it out with him a few times and it wouldn't eject the shell after I shot it. So he's like, Hey, I got a Beretta and I can't remember the exact model that it was. I think it was an A391. Um, I'm not a hundred percent on that. It's probably uh, a, I miss a lot. Is that what you have? Hey, oh, <laughs> I can't hit this bird. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, Woodstock and you know, they had, that's when Beretta started making the semi autos and we're like, Hey, we got, you can shoot by the time your first shell hits the ground, you're going to have your four other shells out. And believe me, I needed all four of those out as fast as possible when birds got up. Um, so that sometimes we but, still do <laughs> dude i can't have enough shells in my gun sometimes yeah huh but no it was so that's the gun um he ended up letting me use that a bunch uh, all through high school and after i went to college i started working at gander mountain and that's where i bought my first uh kind of higher dollar shotgun that was actually the beretta extrema um a391 uh, Extrema 2 actually is a camouflage one. Uh, so I used that for a while until they came out with the Beretta A400. And nice gun. I, like, I like the gun. Don't get me wrong. It shoots very smooth. Never had any problems with it. Uh, it's a three and a half inch chamber, but it is a hog. That thing yep. is heavy. I've And that's I what I like about the Browning. I don't, I don't feel like it's that heavy it's, yeah. it's a pretty light gun and i think it's I actually mean, like six and a half pounds yeah and i've had you hold hold mine when it's fully loaded and it is yep. like it is a beast to carry around i shoot well with it but a full day out in the field i can do a you know like a two-hour morning hunt would be fine yep. but man if i do an all day if my arms are so damn tired at the end you know it's like it just sucks I mean, carrying it around a couple and, pounds you know you don't think it makes a difference but it does yeah uh, which will take us into kind of our next gun and why we both went with it yeah uh, and couldn't hit shit the first time we actually oh. had it out for the first few times uh so tyler and i we actually did a lot of research went out and decided hey you know i'd like to get a lighter gun i'd yep. like to get a little bit of a smaller shot um so we went with a 20 gauge uh, 20 gauge Winchester SX4. So we both have um, the 20 gauges and uh, super nice gun guys. Super nice gun. Uh, it really is light. Um, cycles really well. Um, it is. The, uh, the mechanisms here, I mean, are super tight. There's no, <clears throat> there's no play in it. I've had guns and I think you can speak to that. I don't remember if it was oh, yeah. ogre or whatnot that you had, um, but you could, you could jiggle, you know, your release and whatnot. And this one's just, it's nice yeah, and tight. It, um, super smooth. Very well um, built. You know, but we, we kind of ran into a problem. So, you know, I've never had this with a gun. I've, I've shot a lot of guns in my day and, you know, I couldn't hit shit. I couldn't hit yeah. anything. Then, and that goes for Tyler too. Um, so after our first couple hunts of missing birds, um, kind of was thinking I was going to trade it back in and get something different. Yeah. Um, but I'll let Tyler uh, say what we figured out and kind of yeah. how we got through that. Now we seem to be, we went to a couple of pheasant farms actually to try to figure it out. And, uh, it was tried and true and it worked and we started shooting a lot better. So for some of you guys that buy a new gun and you don't know what to do, uh, here's a good tip. Yeah. And we recommend if you do buy a new gun, 
don't do what we did and buy it and then go to South Dakota and expect to hit every damn bird that gets up because he ain't going to hit shit. The day we left, we bought these guns. <laughs> Stupid. We should have went out, shot clay pigeons with them. Um, so the one thing that we did is you'll see, I don't know if you can see it on the butt of this gun. Yeah, I can see you'll it. you'll see two separate lines here. So when we bought it, uh, the butt plate only had this one. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's, um, you know, how tall are you, Nick? Uh, 5'10 on a good day. 5'10 on a good day with shoes on. Uh, I'm about six foot. Um, but we both, I don't know where our patterns were for some reason. They weren't on. But we both uh, ended up putting this second butt plate in just to extend it that little bit. I mean, that's not even a quarter of an inch. That's probably, what, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little longer. It's probably about, Yeah, you're probably about right. And we uh, did that before one of our hunts and took it out um and dude we smoked the birds that day we truly dusted them you know and to kind of explain that a little bit we lined them up next to our our 12 gauges and obviously i know there's a little disparities within the guns and whatnot but you could tell that the triggers and everything were slightly off the triggers were pretty close to us and i think having that pull and that draw that trigger I think what was happening is we were overcompensating for those birds because the gun's a little bit shorter. Yeah. And is. with that, we were getting ahead of them. And then when we tried to back off, then we were behind them. And we were having such a tough time figuring out because we weren't used to that length and that yeah. bit, the pull of it. So when we switched and put that little extra in there, it, it really made all the difference. I mean, I actually didn't believe it either that it was going to do that, but no. <laughs> I was surprised. I was like, a quarter of an inch actually is going to make me a better shooter, but yeah. it, it really did. And you could feel it too. And we put it up to our shoulder. You could feel just, it felt more comfortable yep. on your shoulder, you know? So if you guys do buy a gun and you know, you aren't hitting stuff with it, don't give up on it. You know, that could be the issue. Uh, obviously go out and shoot it beforehand. Um, and that kind of brings us into our next topic of not every gun has the same choke system. They aren't, the barrels aren't made out of the same thing. So they're going to shoot shells different, right? Yep. Um, so that brings us into the next topic of what shells do you use? Do you use two and three quarter, three inch? What brand are you using? Um, so Nick, can you uh, go through which one you're using for your 20 gauge and then, uh, you know, what you're using for your 12 gauge? Yeah, so recently I switched to, and again, I'm a Browning fan, big supporter of them, uh, but recently Browning came out with the uh, the Browning BXDs, um, and, you know, I gave them a try, I would say two years ago, I think they came out with them, and uh, absolutely love them. Uh, I shot very well with them. I've been shooting well with them. Before that, I was shooting uh, the Fiaci. Uh, brand as well yep. great shell shot well with those two like I said I'm just kind of a browning guy I always kind of have been so I went with these and I usually shoot three inch uh, in my 20 gauge just yep. for those birds that may get out there a little bit farther and I haven't seemed to shoot them up too bad at all sometimes people think oh you're gonna shoot them up I haven't um, I really I really you know been hunting a while so if they are pretty close I tend to wait a little bit let them get out there and then I'll shoot them and usually throughout the season, even with my 12 gauge, I'll even still shoot some three inch uh, or I'll put a couple, I'll put a three inch in the back of the, uh, uh, the chamber. Uh, so that way that uh, that's on the end for those birds that get a little farther out there. Yeah. Do you, uh, what's the, the weight and stuff on that BXD ones, those Browning that you got? Uh, so these shoot, uh, the velocity is a 1250. This is a three inch. Uh, this is a 20 gauge shell. I shoot yeah. six shot and the, uh, the, it's a one and a quarter ounce. One and a quarter ounce. Yeah. Yep. And I actually had very good luck with our SX4 using the Browning shell as well. Uh, that's actually what we used. Uh, when I went out, when we were out in South Dakota, I was using um, Prairie Storm. And I mean, people have tons of good things about that. And I'm not saying Great this is not bad. Shell. I need uh, to, um, you know, and, and I'm going to try it with some clay pigeons after adding on that extra butt plate to see if it shoots well with it. Um, but we took that BXD out. You know, and, and, and it's just not to butt in, but, you know, even for those 
for every this is for every hunter, you know. The Prairie Storm, pretty expensive shell, guys. It is. Pretty, it's top end. I mean, it's great shell. Don't get me wrong, great shell. Probably the best on the market, if not one of the best. Very expensive, but these Browning BXDs come in right around 15, 16 bucks. So it's pretty middle of the road. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's a price point too. I shoot a lot. I'm a shooter. I'll let yeah. shells fly if a bird's going. So you know, I don't necessarily want to burn out the wallet just by you know buying those more expensive shells. But maybe yeah. if I bought them, maybe I'd hit more. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't use a in the 20 gauge. I don't use anything but three inch. Um, yep. I usually bring in anywhere between the five and six shot. I like to stick with the five. Uh, just seems to have just a little more knockdown. Yep. Uh, the speed's pretty consistent between the five and six. There's not a huge difference. Uh, and every once in a while, I'll even use four too. Yeah, I've got I busted out some four, especially like a little uh, late season has a little more. Yep you know yep. power behind it um what uh what what chokes do you uh shoot so in your guns the choke that i have um <laughs> that i stick with most probably 90 percent of the time um and maybe 70 80 is a modified choke um especially with running the flushing dogs um you know you're you do get close shots. I've, we've had a lot of, you know, especially with Nick, his black lab will point, uh, diesel does. So he, you know, he can get those 10 yard, you know, flushes or five yards even. Um, but especially with running the flush or the flushing dogs, uh, it's nice to have a little tighter pattern downstream, you know, so that way you get a bird 30, 35 yards out. And, you know, I, with my 12 gauge, um, I've run the two and three quarter inch uh, Fiacis through that golden pheasant. I've actually ran those through it since I started hunting with that guy uh, named Bear back in high school. They had the Fiacci golden pheasants and the two and three quarter. They're tried and true. They've been around for many years. Um, so I still run that through my 12 gauge. And I mean, I've hit I fit birds that one that I hit out in South Dakota that first year. That thing was yeah. probably 50 yards out. Um, and it just folded. Not exaggerating. It's not, not exaggerating. exaggerating. And if he says not exaggerating, then I'm not exaggerating. But, you know, so it's, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with how you feel with the gun. But, you know, I mean, do you change yours when it comes to weather? Do you change yours late so, season, early season? I honestly don't. I usually keep modified in. 90 to 95 percent of the time i would say and the reason is is usually when you bird hunt for me you always got to carry non-tox shot or steel shot and modified in a steel shot that's a full choke if you're using yep. steel you know so i don't want to have to change out my 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 uh choke when i'm out hunting yeah. so i usually just keep the modified in now you could go to uh oh uh the next size down, I can't, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it. Um, the impro this the improved this cylinder. cylinder, there we go. The improved cylinder, you could go to that one, get a little wider pattern. Yeah. But honestly, I've had such good luck with modified, uh, especially in, in both these guns, I haven't had to change it. So yeah. weather doesn't really play a factor for me in me changing it. I keep it, I've been tried and true. And uh, as you know, um, and same with you, we, we come away with birds late season every year and i actually think we yeah. come away with more birds late season for whatever yeah, I, I tell you i have not to change the subject but dude i have much better luck with late season hunting than i do early season and yeah. i don't know if it's the weather in iowa if you know it takes so long for the cold to get that they're they're finally holding tight if it's because we run flushers i like I don't know. I just have really good luck late season. Yeah, you know, I think it could that could be a couple of things, Tyler. And, you know, guys, if you think it's something different, you know, let us know. But one, I think the crop's staying so late now. So this birds, birds aren't coming to the field right away. And we find those those birds that haven't been shot at later yep. in the season. Um, uh, you know, the second thing is I don't think there's as many hunters out there. So 
That's hunters, true. you find. I feel like we find a lot of those kind of fair weather hunters. They want to hunt early season, get in, get out, get out. Like so, they're not hunting late in December, late into January. Where I mean, Tyler and I went. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was January, almost January last 10th. Weekend, right? The, yeah, or like last the weekend. last day you could almost. Yeah, go. and and we had uh, we got five five roosters. Yep. And actually, uh, got freaking surprised by a cubby of quail, and we yeah. didn't get any. But we should have had a cubby of quail. I so I shit my pants when they got up. It scared me that much. I mean, I think the late season is is for us. I mean, it's been just as good as opening day, if not better. Yeah, I I love. I love late season. I like it. I like I one thing I do, I love it for the dogs. The yep. dogs run a lot better. Um but a lot of that guys is I think that having retrievers, well, I just know from my dog and watching Tyler's dogs that the uh the hotter it is, you know, they don't hunt as long and you know, yeah. it's true for every dog, but if you have like a German short hair, them damn things can hunt all day long. Oh shit, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's eighty degrees out or Yep. you know 20 degrees out they can hunt they just they have that motor on them and they don't care so uh you know i like hunting when it's colder out yeah and to go back to the chokes uh sorry we got off topic guys um but to go back to the chokes you know they they do sell late season and early season chokes i know uh your prairie storm has a prairie storm specific choke for their uh, flight stopper pellets. It's supposed to pattern better. To be honest, I've never used it. Um, I've read some forums from guys that have, and they said it, if you want to spend the money and make it feel better, it does, but they haven't seen a huge pattern difference. So um, I do, I stick with the modified a ton and they're when my, my dogs are a little young, um, so they do get sometimes they get a little rangy which i don't like uh we're working on that in the off season and if i know uh depending on sometimes depending on what public ground i go to we hunt a lot of public ground uh if i know it's kind of if they don't have like cattail sloughs or if they don't have thick cover where the birds are going to run i might put in a full choke that day Yep. If it's windy too, where they can get up and go, um, I might drop in a full choke just because I have a feeling my shots aren't going to be the 20 to 30 yard. They're probably going to be the 30 to 45 yard yep. shots. And, you know, when, when I hit a bird, I want it to, I want to knock it down enough to where I know I hit it good enough. The dogs are going to find it and the bird's going to die. You know, I don't want to sit around and have to run after it for a, a long time. So, yep. uh, that's usually when I put in a full choke, but otherwise it's kind of like, like Nick was saying, 90, 95% of the time just modified. Cause you, when you hunt public ground, if you find one that has good ground, you're going to have to put in that steel shot. So, yeah. you know, you know and, and I've, we've never been checked. I've never been checked, but I, I like to follow the rule book. I always yeah, follow the yeah. rules. Tyler's uh, Tyler's actually a police officer. So yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't I don't need to I don't need to take it from him when we're hunting <laughs> yeah I don't need to turn my eye or anything so. yeah yeah so uh, uh pretty straightforward guys uh you know yeah. I've been thinking I won't give it away but Tyler knows what what I've been thinking I've been thinking about getting a new gun for 2020 right. even though I just got the uh the sx4 in 2019 yep. uh depending on job security and things of that nature things are crazy out there right now guys they are you know, they say, maybe I'll use my stimulus check on it. I know the you're Trump not bucks. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm not supposed to use it, but maybe I will. Um, but take a guess, and it's going to be a browning. It's in the browning uh, category. Take a guess. Yep. See what you think I'm going to get. Uh, I think it'd be a really unique gun. It's going to be great to add to my collection. Um, mm. You know, and I know Tyler was also thinking about possibly a gun to get to in the uh, in the browning series as well. So yep. uh, let us know what you think, you know. Let us know. It's kind of fun to – it is kind of fun to get you guys thinking of what we're going to do. There's so many good guns out there, but it's all about – I like the, – the thing that I love about the Browning is the detail that they put on the receivers. And – Yeah. I just – there's the gun that I'm – that we're kind of looking at. Um, I don't want to throw too big of a hint out there. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, don't do I it. Nice anything, gun. Just, just think old school when you think of the gun that we're looking for. 
Um, I mean, there's guys. There's a lot of great guns out there. You can look at uh, Super Black Eagle by Benelli. Uh, yeah, Beretta. Beretta. We know. We know. There's a lot of great guns out there. This is just what we like. Yeah, uh, and it's you opinions. know we're looking at a little bit of a. Uh, it's a high, little higher price. Um, yep. You know, it's up in the what is it close to fifteen hundred something like yeah, that. Yeah, fifteen so, sixteen. Yeah. So. so I mean, it's it's one of those guns where it's it's some like a proud gun to have. Yeah, yeah. probably won't use it that much, time or two, but uh, uh, mainly a collector's item, I think, yeah. and uh, I think it's it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be pretty cool, and I'm it excited. Uh, I, I can't you know, wait to, to see. everything, it. knock on wood, as long as we get through this uh, COVID-19 and yeah. you all get through it safe, too, uh, you know, then I'll uh, I'll be purchasing that gun. Yep. Um, yeah, that's <sighs> – you know, with the with steel shot, do you do you have your steel shot? Do you change it up with a brand for that? Which one? I use Fiaci uh, steel. Actually, I do use Fiaci with that as well. Uh, I always it, stick with it the seems three. to work good. And the other one that I actually did this year and it worked good for me, it was uh, it was Winchester, and that seemed yeah. that seemed to do just fine. Yeah, I use the Winchester. That's the thing. As long those as are actually works. super cheap. Guys, there's like ten bucks a ten bucks a box. I mean, yeah. So. And I, I stick with the three inch with the, um, this, the steel, they seem to have a little less knockdown power than what the, um, the lead does, uh, yep. but they do fly faster. The, usually the speed on steel is pretty fast. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker. Usually shooting at ducks with it is what it's made for, you know, or geese, you know, ducks are fast flying little buggers. Uh, yes, they are. So, but yet, I mean, <sighs> If you guys, obviously, if you guys have questions that you'd like to send us, let us know. Um, we're going to keep keep plugging away, but... Uh, yeah, and let us know what you want to know about. Let us, uh, you know, talk to us questions, anything about hunting. Uh, we're actually thinking about doing a, a potential guiding service this year. So if you guys need a, some dogs, yeah. want us to come along, um, there will be a fee with that. Uh, but we can talk about that at a later date. Yeah, yeah, we'd we, love to come out, help you guys get some birds and just bring, bring some beer, you know? Yeah, we got a a podcast coming up uh not to try to go into the next one but um, we're going to talk to a lady that owns a hunting preserve that uh, nick uses a lot uh, that has really helped his dog along great people um you know uh won't give too many details but they do things right uh they're easy to work with and their birds fly fantastic yeah. so we'll bring them on hopefully get them here and then we have a couple more other down the road uh yeah, we're going to keep this rolling, and we hope to gain some followers and tell your friends. And, and other than that, I got I to drop one thing about the the Browning BPS, the one that I took out to South Dakota this year. You remember that one? Yep. Um, so that one <clears throat> was my grandpa's, my dad's dad. Uh, he worked for Pioneer Seed, and I tried to find it today before we did this podcast because I was like, oh, I got to bring this gun up because just because it's kind of cool. It's a it's a browning. We both like browning. Uh, you mix browning and pioneer seed corn together, how more American <laughs> can you get? You know what I'm saying? I got a Carhartt hat on shit. We're all American. Um, all American, baby. This gun, I tried to find, see how many they made, but back in, I think it was about 20, I think my dad was saying it was 20, 25 years ago, maybe even a little longer. Um, pioneer seed partnered with browning to, if they're, if you reach a certain level of sales as a seed corn rep, they sent you a Browning uh, BPS 12 gauge, uh, two and three quarter, three inch shotgun, 28 inch barrel, I believe, with a good deal. Um, a Pioneer seed symbol engraved into the wood, and then it had a nice uh, pheasant and outlay on one side and a duck outlay on the other side. Yeah, it's a beautiful gun, guys. Beautiful it gun. Is um so if you guys have a chance to look one of those up i i tried to look it up on google today and that i couldn't find anything i saw one for sale but it wasn't the same one um so if you have a chance look those up they're pretty pretty legit guns so yeah no this is a good gun actually as the first birdie got out in south dakota was with that gun i was like shit i might as well bust out something that i know is tried and true right yep um Another thing that we're starting, guys, uh, is, and we hope you guys uh, want to take part in this, is uh, Flush them and Dust them Fridays. Uh, we'd like to 
show off other people's uh, retrievers and what they're doing out there. You know, it's, especially in this off season, it, you know, it can get kind of stale for people. Uh, so we want to try to. Training's tough. I know it. it uh, you know, I have a one-year-old coming up here. She keeps me busy. My wife and I are both working at home. So unfortunately, uh, the boy takes a little bit of a back seat, and I uh, haven't been able to train him as much as I would like just because of yeah. circumstances. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to get out there as much as I can. Um, and it just, you know, I'll, I'll keep posting when I can. And Tyler's coming up with some great content. We're getting more people rolling. I saw Matt Mosier today. Uh, yep. He's uh, from Northeast yep. Iowa. Chimed in, gave us some great photos. Uh, yeah. We love that stuff. Check those, um, check actually that out. I, actually, I actually know him personally. So yeah. uh, he's got a great dog, five-month-old. Uh, and we're going to try to pull him on here too and, and uh, get a little chat from him as well. Yeah, he's got a pretty cool background. You were telling me, the canine officer. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to bring him on and talk about uh, – try to bring up some obedience. So if you guys are looking for obedience for your young – young dog that would be a great one to listen to i think he would drop some pretty good knowledge on you guys oh yeah and to be honest if you that's think it's the best dog, right there yeah you think about a bird dog I mean, it all starts with obedience if you can't control them in the field you know you got to be able to control your dog which i had that issue this year that about pissed us well it pissed us <laughs> off. i was pissed for about three days after that <laughs> happens happens you know, ruined a happy hour yeah. or is that called happy hour? Happy hour sunset? Golden hour. Golden hour. Jesus. Must be thinking about the beer instead of the hunting. So, uh, well, but guys, I appreciate you guys for stopping in. Uh, Nick, like we always say at the end, flush them and dust them. Yeah. What do they say, boys? Flush them and dust them. Hey, yeah. have a good night, guys. All right. See you guys later.